Welcome to week two of Explore the Bible. We're continuing in the Gospel of John, excited about this passage today in John chapter 12. So before we dive into that passage, be sure and subscribe to our channel. If you haven't already, like, comment, share with others, and know this, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be putting out some, a series of videos on how to teach and how to study God's Word, so we're excited about that. But now, let's dive into John chapter 12. It says, now some Greeks were among those who went up, went up to worship at the festival. So they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they requested of him, sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Okay, these are some Greeks. This is an important part out here, right? There are Greeks here. Uh, we need to remember that. They're Greeks. They're not Jews. Uh, they're not, it, it, no, even an idea they're converted, but they're somehow there and they want to see Jesus, right? We want to see Jesus. Boy, what a great, it's just a great phrase, isn't it? We want to see Jesus. Okay. So they go and uh, they, or they come to Jesus and Jesus replies to them. He talks to them. We kind of jump right there quick. The hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. Truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Okay, Jesus is about to share with them kind of a, a prophecy, a statement about what's about to happen to him. And he's laying some things out for them. And, and it's an odd way of saying it, I think, to us, if we think about in that moment. Now, we look at it from our side. We look at it and go, oh, well, it makes perfect sense. But if we put ourselves in that moment, it sounds odd because we think of Jesus dying on the cross is one of the great moments, maybe the great moment in history with his resurrection, right? These two great events that, that are thought of as one, his death, burial, and resurrection, Easter weekend. We think of that, right? One huge event, the greatest event in all of history. But look at how uh, Jesus describes it and how they thought of it. If you can put yourself in their place. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. He says the Son of Man is going to be glorified, right? I tell you that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. He's going to die. And this is his glory. Wow. If you just think about that, right? Not many of us think about the, the moment when the Lord brings great glory and, and we're really known well is when we die. That's not what we think of as our glory, right? We think of our accomplishments, our efforts, uh, the life that we've lived, the things that we've done, the people we've talked to, whatever it is, right? These are our great accomplishments. But here Jesus is saying, when I'm going to be glorified, it's when I die. But, but here's the explanation. Because if it dies, it produces much fruit. That in the death, in the passing, that's where the fruit is produced. And so um, as Jesus looks at his coming death, which we're in chapter 12, we've got a little bit to go before we get there. But when he thinks about his coming death, he's not thinking about it as defeat, although that's certainly how a lot of people might look at it, how Satan, we think, looks at it, right? But he's seeing that as the necessary thing that must happen so that fruit can be produced. The seed goes into the ground, it dies so that fruit the tree, the plant, whatever it is, comes up out of the ground and produces fruit. Jesus has to die for that to happen. This is a great thing. He will be glorified, but it's hard to picture it that way, isn't it? And then he goes on. He says, the one who loves his life will lose it, and the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Okay, I want us to think about a couple of things as Jesus kind of puts in juxtaposition here that are that are counterintuitive to us. They don't seem to be the way we might think about things normally, right? The one who loves his life will lose it. The one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Okay, this loves his life right here and then hates his life in contrast to one another. Um you hate your life. I mean, this clearly this is what the Christian is supposed to have, right? The follower of Jesus to hate his life. And that doesn't sound right, does it? Does it to you? Does it sound right? I mean, is you're supposed to hate your life? But I think what you know, we think about how Jesus often uses these words, how the Scripture often uses these words. 
um, he loved Isaac and, um, you know, his um, Jacob and Esau, well, hated Esau, loved Jacob, but he didn't hate Esau, did he? Jesus says, if you don't hate your mother and father, your brother and your sister, you can't follow me. But it doesn't mean you have to hate your family, does he? It is that which you desire to choose, which is most important to you. That if, if your life here on this earth is most important to you, you're going to lose it. But if your life here on this earth is not most important to you, if, if instead the thing that is most important to you is eternity, well, then you'll keep it for eternal life. I think that's how we should see this, right? It's not a, it's not this hatred and love um, against one another. It's the idea that there are things that we value that are most important to us. And, and what is it that we're supposed to get most important? If your family is most important to you, more so, you're going you're gonna to honor your family, even if it means turning away from God, well, then you can't follow Jesus. But if you're going to, if you're going to willing to appear to some as if you hate your family because you're turning towards God and you're rejecting what they've taught you and how you've grown up, if that means if the only way to follow Jesus is to reject what your family has taught you, then it appears you hate your family, but you love Jesus more than so. It's Jesus chose one Jacob and not Esau. Jacob is the one through whom the promise would come, not Esau. Even though he loved the father, Isaac, he, he chose the son, one of the other, one son and not the other, right? Through whom the promise would come. Who, what are you going to choose? This life or the next life? Which is going to be most important to you? Which is going to be most valuable to you? You have to choose one or the other. You can't choose them both. You can't say, this life I love and I'm going to do everything I can to live the best life I can here on earth. Even if that means I don't live in a way that honors eternity. Well, if you do that, you're going to lose eternity. You can't choose both. You have to pick one over the other. It doesn't mean that you, if you choose to live for eternity, you'll have a terrible life now. In fact, it means that's the only way to really to have a full, abundant, complete life, which doesn't mean a great life, and it doesn't mean a rich life, and it doesn't mean a famous life or a wealthy life, but it means a life that honors God. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. You're going to serve Jesus, you're going to have to follow Jesus. This should make sense, right? This part makes sense. There's no way to follow Jesus without serving him. In fact, if you say, well, I'm not going to serve you, well, then you're not going to follow him. I mean, they kind of go together, right? And where I am, there my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. The servant becomes honored. Okay. Then, now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But that is why I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. And the crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Okay, this is Jesus deciding which life he's going to pick. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour. Father, I love this life. I love where I am. I love what I'm doing. I want to stay right here. Is that what he should say? This, this is this question, right? Do you love this life? Is this the one you're going to pick? If, you're, if you have to pick one or the other, which one are you going to pick? Jesus says, I've made my decision, right? I came to this hour, to this time. So now his prayer is, Father, glorify your name. That, that when I do exactly what God wants, I may not be glorified, but God will be, right? Glorify your name. And then he hears this voice from heaven, which says, I have glorified it and I will glorify it. The Lord confirms to him. You know, I hadn't thought about this passage a lot in this idea, but there are times in Jesus's life here on earth where the Father confirms to him where he's going, what he's doing. He affirms the things that Jesus is doing. I don't know that Jesus had doubts or questions, but others may have. Others certainly did. But there is this confirmation and affirmation that the Father gives him. You are doing the right thing. And he hears this, and the crowd's standing there, and they, they are oblivious. Some of them thought it's thunder. 
they didn't they didn't understand it at all. They they couldn't pick out words from what we said. It just sounded like loud, loud noise. I bet it did, right? But some said it was an angel. They heard a voice. They they heard words, but they didn't know God the Father, so they didn't recognize his voice. The sheep and all of that. Okay. Jesus responded, here's what Jesus said, this voice came not for me, but for you. This affirmation of who Jesus is and what he is doing came for you. Now, this is the judgment of this world. Now, the rulers of the world will be cast out. As for me, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate what kind of death he was about to die. So John giving us the little hint, you know, in case we didn't get it, his his laying things out. It, this is what's about to happen, you know. He's telling you, here's what's going to happen. All right, this Jesus says, this is the judgment of the world. The ruler of this world will be cast out. Jesus says, you know, it will appear that I lost. It will appear the ruler of this world has won. That is not what is happening at all, right? He says, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. I think we can go back here when he talks about, but if it dies, it produces much fruit, right? Jesus is saying, um, when I get lifted up on the cross, at that point, I will be drawing people to me. But he's also, there, part of, we think of this, Jesus being lifted up as worship, right? An act of worship, this phrase to lift him up, right? If I be lifted up, there is this idea that, that worship, true worship, draws people. It is the function of bringing glory, of glorifying the Lord. And to glorify the Lord is to make his name great, to make his name known. So we make his name known by glorifying him. And when we do that, when we honor him and glorify him, that's when people begin to know who Jesus is and they are drawn to him. The act of total sacrifice, of saying, you know, what should I say? Save me? No, Jesus says, no, I'm, I'm going. I don't love this life more. Now, the question we have to ask is, which life do we want? Which life do we want more? This one or the next one? What are we going to live for? This one or the next one? Well, that's a hard question, isn't it? But that's the decision every person, certainly every believer, but every person has to make. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope it's helped. Thanks for teaching. Appreciate all of you teachers for studying, preparing, and I hope this has helped you as you do that. God bless you for that. Be sure and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the videos, comment, share with others. We appreciate it when you do that. We will see you next time.